this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to episode 37 of the Take One Podcast. As always, I am your host, Michael Bish, and I'm super excited uh, for today's episode, like I always am. Uh, but we are on the road to Scream 6. Uh, last week, we kicked off with, obviously, the 1996 classic Scream, and we picked back up today with Scream 2. Uh, and honestly, I love this movie. I feel like a lot more than a lot of people, and I'm super interested to hear how our guest feels today. Jess, you may know her as Discount Final Girl, joins me today. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing well. How are you? Good, good. Excited to um, be on here uh, and talk and, talk and Scream 2 with you. I um, I watched it last night. I know you watched it last night as well. So very fresh in our minds. Um, so yeah, I, I'm super excited to dive into it. Scream 6 tickets went on sale today. I saw that you got yours. Yeah, um, did you get yours? I did. I did. Are you going in 3D? I'm going in 3D only because I could see it on Thursday and not Friday. So Yeah, I think that's what I got I don't, to do. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about the 3D thing, but who knows? It might be great. It might be terrible. I'm like not the biggest fan of 3D. Um, Me either. But I haven't seen a movie in 3D in a long ass time. So I don't know like how receptive I'll be to it. Um, I'm actually going to the movies this weekend with a friend to see the 25th anniversary of Titanic. Nice. Um, so I was super excited about that, but I didn't know it was they're They're only showing it in 3d. So I was kind of disappointed in that. Cause it's like, uh, again, I'm not the biggest fan of 3d and I they're can't only showing Titanic in 3d. I cannot, at least near me, I cannot find it anywhere else. And one of my friends up in Toronto, he's going to see it too. And he's only he can only find it in 3D as well. And like I'm super frustrated because I felt like it was not advertised in 3D. Yeah, that's weird. I know. I know. Okay. <laughs> so it's like I don't know if I want to sit through a three hour movie in 3D. Like I don't know how that's gonna. Yeah. I don't know. I was, I was hoping maybe just regular or even IMAX. Like I was able to go see Jaws in IMAX when they re released oh. it recently. Oh man, what an experience! But I um, bet that was awesome. Yeah. So. I don't know. That's kind of disappointing, but I feel like from like here on out, like I feel like I'm going to be at the movies every weekend for at least the next five, six weeks. I feel like there's a movie coming out yeah. that I really, really want to see. What about you? Any movies coming up that you're really interested in? And I know last time we had you on the podcast, we talked about Knock at the Cabin and we'll jump into that here soon. But any other movies coming up that you're really looking forward to outside of Scream 6? Yeah, for sure. So I know this weekend I'm going to go see The Outwaters. Have you heard about that? I have, but they're not showing it near me. Uh, I know. It. It's so tough. It's so tough. It sucks. <laughs> you got to Do you got to drive like anywhere or is it they showing somewhere close to you? Thankfully, last minute, my local theater is like showing it. Um, it's oh, actually I'm nice. very, very lucky. And I have an Alamo draft house where I live and they usually show like everything, even if it's like a little bit more of an indie movie. Um, so I'm going to go see that on Friday, which I can't wait about. Um, and then what else? Oh, um, I'm going to see Cocaine Bear at the end yes. of the month. I'm really excited for Cocaine Bear. I know. Me too. I saw the previews for it when I went and saw Knock at the Cabin. Uh, and I was like, honestly, this sounds this is probably going to be like one of the funnest movies of the year. Like, I'm so exactly. excited for that. I, I can't wait. <laughs> so you said Alamo Draft House. That's your local theater. Is that the one you always go to usually or do you kind of usually up? usually? Yeah. Yeah. I like that one a lot. I've heard like nothing but great things about that. Um, I know my aunt like I don't know if there's anyone. I don't think there's one around me. The closest one to me is my aunt. She lives in North Carolina. Um, so that's the closest one to me, but I've never been to one. I have like, I go to Regal. That's the closest one to me. I think we have one AMC theater around here, but other than that, it's all, all Regals near me. Well, I probably live near your aunt because mine is in North Carolina and Raleigh. Um, Rale Raleigh. Yeah. 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 Raleigh. And so, yeah, I mean, ever since I, I'm originally from Charlotte, but ever since I moved to Raleigh, it's been like my go-to. It's so fun. They have like movie parties yeah. and 
tickets are like generally cheaper than usual and they serve drinks so that's all i could really ask for i know like what else do you need i love that um yeah. so yes i'm really looking forward to cocaine bear too um i don't know if you're a big marvel fan i don't ant-man and the wasp i'm really interested to see hopefully that's nice. good yeah. um, and then um creed 3 is the following yes. week after cocaine bear and then we get scream so it's like a good five to six weeks where we're where i'm gonna be at the movies and i'm super excited for it because i have a regal pass so i pay like 20 mm -hmm. bucks a month and i'm able to go see as many movies as i want so i try to take advantage of that even when it's like movies i don't see i'll tell you like one of the things that i love about having the pass is movies are expensive period but like having the pass it'll it, like i can go see a movie that i'm kind of on the fence about and not feel bad about my wallet breaking to go yeah see it. no i have the same thing but the thing that sucks about like the alma one i don't know mm. if it's the same with yours but you have to wait seven days like oh uh, okay so i can't buy like scream tickets and use it for scream tickets ask be like within seven days of the movie coming out which sucks so gotcha because i feel like the majority of the time like i'm buying tickets for like a month in advance <laughs> yeah oh no same same here i gotta make sure i have a good seat did you i don't go to amc but did you see how they did their recent uh yeah. ticket prices? what's that I, about i don't know but i hope i hope theaters don't follow suit with that because that is the dumbest shit i've ever seen in my life like they're already expensive Already yeah, I, I've seen some actors like Elijah Wood. I've seen him say like, this is ridiculous. Like, what are, what are you doing? I know, Just I've another greedy corporation. I know. Yeah. I, don't, I don't get it. And like, of course, the preferred seat is kind of like eye level. And that's, I think, the most expensive one. And it's yeah. like, come on. Like, what are you doing here? Like, tickets are already expensive as hell. I mean, that's the, reason, that's the reason I went with the pass. Because one ticket for me in a Regal Theater is like 13 bucks. So if yeah. I go see two movies, I'm basically already paying for my pass. So it was like it was a no brainer for me. But I don't know. It's already expensive, especially if you get concessions. Um, yep. <laughs> Very expensive. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, so, again, I'm super excited to dive into this. Um, I do really want your opinion on Knock at the Cabin. Um, I was expecting you to put out a YouTube video like I was looking for that. I didn't see that drop, but I did see Letterbox, I believe um so how was your experience with knock at the cabin did you like it what were some things you liked and didn't like about it yeah yeah so i should have put out a video i've been slacking quite honestly but um it's a lot to keep up with trust it me is, like, it's I get so it. much it's so much but um so it's tough because i read the book and i'm a very big fan of the book and of the author um and up into a certain point, I feel like M. Night Shyamalan did a really great job of honoring the book um, and the plot line and the characters. Honestly, the characters are exactly like how they're described in the book, which is so awesome. And you nice. never really get to see that. Like Leonard, yeah. uh, Dave Bautista, like in the book, he's like this big man in this tight button shirt with the glasses. It's perfect, right? But I think... Um, well, first of all, I think for an R rating, it was rated R. It did not go far enough um, with Agreed. that R rating. I, I think agree. they took it only for like, they said like the F word a few times, like they cursed. The book is is much more graphic. So I feel like he could have used that to his advantage a little bit. No, I agree. I, I, I was talking uh, last night um, to somebody and I was like, it, it was good, but it kind of reminded me a little bit of Megan as far as like kind of turning away from the kills or not really seeing the kills. Obviously, you see what happens to uh, Dave Bautista's character at the end. You see the blood, but you don't really see anything that's too, too graphic. And I thought that that was kind of deflating with the rating that it got. I thought it was definitely going to go in that more graphic area. So I see you saying it's a lot more graphic in the book. I would have loved to have seen that, you know, be pictured on the screen. I think M. Night is Shyamalan right I, I want to mm -hmm. make sure I say that right yeah so um his movies I, I feel like are always hit and miss um I feel like his earlier movies I connect with more and I enjoy more like Signs and Sixth Sense like I enjoy those a lot but here recently I just haven't been a big fan and I feel like I walked out of Knock at the Cabin at least satisfied mm -hmm. um again I haven't read the book so um as far as lining up with that I'm not sure obviously like you said you can kind of relate to that more but um again i wanted to see more kills on the screen i thought the characters were really good i think this is dave batista's best performance in any movie i've seen him do um because he like embodies so many different 
elements in this movie as far as some darkness, but a lot lighthearted softness to his character as well. And I thought that he did absolutely phenomenal with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think his performance in uh, the new Blade Runner movie was like his set up to a more serious character, like kind of breaking away from that, like a uh, wrestler and then the Marvel character. Yeah. But really, he he carried the whole entire movie. Um, and it's so interesting to see a character that when you first meet it, you think that they're going to be evil and awful and they have, you know, different motives. But at the end of the day, to his core, he's a good person, a good character. Yeah. And I think that like he does such an excellent job. And even though, you know, the book straight away or the movie straight away from the book um, in the end, I understand the reasonings why because they would have been a little more controversial if you want to talk about it after this so we don't give spoilers i'm happy yeah. to do that but um I, I think it was a very satisfying movie like you said um his older stuff i enjoyed more i didn't like old but i did like the visit so that was i don't good. know that was really good yeah yeah so i think it's a little bit of a comeback for him and i've seen a lot of people really enjoy this so i think it's great yeah, yeah, it was good. I, I enjoyed it. I don't know as far as rewatch value for me where it lands. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's a movie I would go back and rewatch a bunch of times. Um, but again, I walked out satisfied and, and really liking it. And it was something different. Uh, and I kind of yeah. knew that that's what we were going to get. Now, I do want to ask one thing, like in the book, is there a lot more build up or do they jump into it kind of just like they do in the movie? They jump into it right from the movie. The first nice. chapter of the book is when Catching Grasshoppers. So mm. it's it the movie picks up and I that's like such a positive. I've seen so many people take away from it. Like it jumps right in, jumps right in, in the book. There are a lot of flashbacks like we see in the movie um, about her being adopted and, and stuff like that. So it it's very fast paced. The book is like this then you can oh, read really? it quickly. Yeah. So um, how, but it's very deep. How long has the book been like? How long ago did you read the book? Um, I read the book last year but it's mm -hmm. been out for a few years now oh, okay cool yeah yeah so um i, th I think that my, again my biggest takeaway from that is just seeing dave batista grow as an actor yeah. like i grew up watching him wrestle like i was a big wrestling fan as a kid so being able to see him like really flourish into different characters i thought he was pretty good in glass onion um i didn't see you said it was blade correct blade runner yeah blade runner, 2069 yeah, I, I wasn't able to see that, um, but it, I guess it's something I have to go back and watch because, mm. again, I just absolutely love everything that he has done in his career and being able to take this next step, I feel like was really, really good for him. And it's just going to open up so many more avenues for him in different types of roles that I'm really looking forward to for him. Definitely. Um, so what else? What have you been? Have you been watching anything else, um, whether it's rewatches, TV shows? Oh. Real quick, I want to talk about The Last of Us. Um, yeah. Because I don't really get to talk about that much with anybody. Um, I feel like all of my close friends are like an episode or two episodes behind. And I'm like, you have to catch up. It is so good. Are you caught up? I'm not. <laughs> okay. but <laughs> I you, haven't watched the one from Sunday. But That's fine. Um, that's fine. But you've seen yeah. three. So, cause that's yes. The one I, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> um, well, actually, I know you saw three. I saw your Instagram story, I believe. Um, so yeah. it, fucked, it fucked you up um like it did for most people um i think it's just like one of the best episodes of television that i've seen in a really long time uh quite uh, frankly like it, it was so good it was set up so good um i didn't play the game so i didn't know where that story was gonna go at first i kind of thought he was setting him up to kill him because i don't know again i don't know anything so when he says to go take a shower i'm like okay, this is like where he's going to like make his move and it tur just turned into something totally that I was not expecting. And I was, I was teary at it then. I'm not going to lie. Like it, they did. It was such good writing and very good performances. It was such a good episode. Yeah, I definitely agree. I like, like you, I didn't play the games either, but I had the same feelings like, okay, he maybe is trying to take advantage of Bill and he's, I mean, of course, of course, you're going to have that thought, right? This man is like surviving an apocalypse all by himself. And he runs across this town with running water and food and a man who wants to take care of him. Why wouldn't he take advantage of that? You know, yes. so, but like 
it, like you said, it's the most beautiful writing, the most beautiful storytelling. And at the end of the day, I had to sit back and like, yes, I was a wreck. I like posted it everywhere. <laughs> like I cried like a baby, but you have to appreciate and recognize the fact that it's not a sad story. Like at the end of the day, they had a beautiful life Yeah. in a time where having a beautiful life just didn't seem realistic. So it was a positive ending, but it was just so heartbreaking because they were such likable characters, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you bring up a great point. Having such a beautiful life and a great life in a time where it's hard to do that. And I think one of the things that really stuck out to me, it was probably one of the most simplest things, but one of the like purest things is when he goes and takes them out to the garden and shows that, you know, the vegetables are being planted. And I thought that was like so well done. And it's just like the strawberries. Yes. <laughs> something so simple. It's just like, Oh, it just brought the biggest smile to my face. And it was, it was just such a very, such a good episode. And I'm super glad, like overall, I'm really liking the show. Are you liking it overall? I love it. I think it's, it's yeah. so great. I love the, um, the concept of, the what do they call them um i i don't know it blinked i people are gonna be so pissed <laughs> I, know, I know um but like the infected like i love the concept and i love the way they yeah. mutate and the way it's like kind of like a hive mind so interesting the people who wrote the game obviously knew exactly what they were doing yeah so. you, i mean you got to go different um because you know you obviously the big one out there is the walking dead when it comes to like zombie apocalypse or just any type of apocalypse period so you got to go different and they did and i think so far they've definitely hit on it they've already been renewed for a season two which is very mm -hmm. exciting um i'm excited for you to watch the fourth one because i think um the fourth one is maybe not as beautiful but um it does tell a beautiful story again um, and I'm not going to ruin anything for you, but we definitely see the relationship between those two, like really strive and really open up. So really excited for you to watch that. I love that. Yeah, I'll definitely watch it and I'll let you know what I think. I can't yes, wait. Please. Such a good um, show. <laughs> yes, definitely highly recommend to anybody that is not watching it or needs something to watch. Yes. Definitely hop on that. Um, anything else um, that you've been watching or um. Anything? Yeah, so I am like a habitual rewatcher. So I like have comfort shows. Guilty. So um, Great British Baking Show that is like <laughs> on a constant loop in my house. They're just so nice to each other. I need that with like constant yeah. negativity, right? Um, Game of Thrones, constant uh, loop. Bob's Burgers, Adventure constant Time, regular shows. show. Yes. Constant. constant. But um, uh, I've been watching White Lotus too, and I really enjoy that. So like first time or rewatching yeah first time first time i just finished season one. Oh so. man season two is really good i'm excited for you to watch that um i watched like both seasons when i was sick uh, a couple months ago mm. and it was it was so good i just kept hearing people talk about it and i was like okay i'll give it a shot and um Aubrey plaza is amazing in it um she's in the second season so i'm uh, really excited for you to watch that it's a good show though i really like it Awesome. Yeah, I'll let you know what I think. <laughs> yes, please. Um, okay. Uh, there was something else that I wanted to discuss, but I can't remember what it was. Oh, okay. Um, so we talked. We touched a little bit on the last podcast you were on, but we didn't go into details because I hadn't seen it yet. Skin of Marine. Did you see my score for it? Yeah. Uh, I think Kevin screenshotted it. Kevin screenshotted it and sent it to me. I said you weren't allowed to review any more movies until you watch <laughs> Salem's Lot. <laughs> oh, that's fair. Yeah, I got to watch that. Yeah, he blasted me on their podcast today, too. Like, he screenshotted it and put it up. That's... Um, I don't know. I just could not get into it. Like, I really... And, I, I like, they were explaining it to me on the screen watch. Like, and I was so excited. Like, they were like, it's different. You know, watch it in the dark. I'm like, okay. Like, I was just so excited. And then I just... <sighs> I just felt deflated because I was like, I, I really, I really want to like this movie. Like, I want to be included with my friends and be excited about it and hype about it. And it just did not work for me. I think we hyped <sighs> it up too much. We hyped it up too much. But I mean, and good, that's like why it's the, fun, good right? For the, yeah, and good for the movie though. I mean, it was made for what fifteen thousand dollars, and it's in the millions now. So that's yeah. what I loved. I don't care whether I like it or not. That's amazing to see. I just wish I was 
with everybody else and like i know i'm it's it sucks and like but that that's what happens with like every movie right we all have our different yeah. opinions on it but you have to recognize <clears throat> like you said it's so cool and it's it opened is. the doors for like um this other analog horror creator Kane, who made the Backroom series on YouTube, which is mm. like another analog core series, just signed a deal with A24 to direct his own movies. He's 17. He's going to be directing oh. this on a summer break. <laughs> I have never felt more inadequate in my life. Okay. Uh, you and me so, both. Did you have to tell me that? <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. Everyone has to feel as bad as I do about no, themselves. Fair. No, that's fair. Um, but it's just, it's really cool what like taking new concepts that people aren't familiar with will. Yeah. It'll just open doors and help people explore more avenues that they're not so familiar with, if that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. What was one thing uh, before we move off of this that really hit with you from the movie that kind of really stuck with you? Um, From Skinnamarink, I would say um, the something that's always gotten me about uh, stuff like that, like internet horror, is the distorted voices. Mm. So yeah. whenever like he was in the kid was in the kitchen and he got some instructions or um when the sister went to the bedroom and she got some instructions yeah. you know that the voices and like the kind of quick jump scares always get me no that's a hundred percent fair like i get it i just again wish i felt that with y'all that's um, okay i i have a lot of friends who if i like ask them to watch this movie i would not be friends with them anymore they would end their <laughs> friendship with me so it's okay <laughs> all right so let's go ahead and dive into scream 2 uh really excited to jump into this um i kind of just want to start with do you kind of remember when you first saw it and if you didn't that's fine i guess you're just first memories of, of watching this movie um and then just you know i guess you know what you liked about it um and then we'll kind of go from there yeah so I don't know when I watched this movie for the first time, but I will say like immediate takeaway is the opening sequence is I think it's super fun. Yes. Um, Gail's hair, the red and the black. That was iconic. Mm -hmm. And that's about it. <laughs> no, that, but, um, that, that's I fair. loved it. Yeah. I like Scream 2. I think Scream 2 is very underrated. Um, it's very campy. It's Thank very you. meta and fun. It is. And I think like people will learn to appreciate it over time. Yeah, it's it's definitely one of the mo those movies that I really love a lot that like you said, I feel like it's definitely underrated. Um, I guess uh one of the things for me, oh yeah, let's, let's start with that opening scene. Uh I, I feel like it's it's fun, like you said, it's um, we still go into we, we started off with the first screen where Drew Barrymore gets killed. And then obviously in the second one, Jada Pickett Smith gets killed. So these two high profile filed actors getting killed in the, in the opening first two movies was done really, really well. I really think personally these first two and I don't know how you feel about three. We'll touch on it when we get to our rankings. But I like three a lot more than a lot of people do. And I feel like all three openings were done really, really good. But definitely the first two movies stand out to me. Um, I like the whole movie theater type scene. Everybody's wearing the ghost face mask. Um, I guess one of the things that I had to suspend my belief with is the knife going through the bathroom stall. I don't know if that yeah. would <laughs> obviously really work. But other than that, that's just like me being like, you know nitpicking um but i like when he walks in to use the bathroom and both ghost face turn around and kind of give him that look um it starts off like just super energetic and i don't want to say like funny but it has like a comedic relief to it right away uh that i really enjoyed uh, and then obviously turns for all the wrong reasons um and i like when he goes back to the chair and she pulls out her hand and her hands are bloody and um i can't well first off I have to say that if I'm in there watching staff for the first time and the movie theater is going off like that, I'm going to be pissed. Like, please, yes. please let me watch my movie in peace. Um, but I thought that that was such a cool scene to have all the ghost face mask in there um, and then just have that kill take that first kill take place in front of everybody it was really, really cool. Yeah, I definitely agree. I think um, Jada Fickett Smith, her character is <laughs> like, I don't want to say like she deserved to get killed. I don't want to say that, but like you're in this theater with all these different people who are so excited mm -hmm. to watch something and you're not that excited. Like, 
I'm maybe it's just a horror horror lover in me but like what are you doing girl that is like such a hype atmosphere exactly I like nobody it. wants to go see some sandra bullock shit i know <laughs> i mean i mean but no i know like i know i just like that she, line it's so funny <laughs> I, it's so funny it's so funny but um yeah i'm with you on the the door yeah at first i was like oh I don't know. I don't. That seems a little impossible to me. But uh, yeah, I need to know how sharp that knife is to be it, going I mean, through that door. Yeah, he had to def definitely. Um, so, what are some likes about the entire movie that you really enjoyed? Like, especially like rewatching it last night and kind of having it fresh in your mind. What are some things that you really enjoyed about it? So, um, I really enjoyed how they kind of took Sydney's boyfriend and like took a lot of those themes from the first movie about her believing or putting her trust in the wrong people or believing the wrong person. Like they played on that a lot. Like, should I trust my boyfriend? That obviously yeah. didn't work out well for me in the past. Even um, to the very end. Exactly. Exactly. And I thought that was really cool. And it kind of flipped it on its head where we have a good guy. We have somebody who actually was trying to protect Sydney um, and I like, I think this is a new feeling for me, but I really like Mickey as a character. I do too. Um, and we're going to jump into Mickey's character when it comes to dislikes, because it's not that I dislike his character. Oh. We'll, we'll, we'll jump into that in a second. Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, Dewey and Gail's relationship is always such a highlight for me. Um, <laughs> it's so funny. Dewey is such a goof. But he is. Uh, he is. I love I love when he gets animated about the book and he recites every line on whatever page. He's like chapter, chapter 42. <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> so good. I know their chemistry is, is really good. I don't know. If, I don't. Were, do you know if they were married into? Yeah, they were. Yeah, into? they okay. I think they were in two. And then around like three is when they got divorced. Gotcha. Maybe. Gotcha. Anything else for you? The kind of stand not off the top of my head what about you i want to hear your thoughts um first off i want to touch on your review of this movie i want to take the next minute like 50 seconds to let's play some mvp highlights because the mvp of my movie is joel 100%. yes he is <laughs> absolutely Kimberman. phenomenal yes and let's take a minute to enjoy these clips i read what happened to your last cameraman the guy got gutted. Now me, I'm going to do what any rational human being would do, which is get the fuck out of here. First of all, he wasn't gutted. I made that up. His throat was slashed. What do you... Yo, gutted, slashed. The guy ain't in the union no more. I don't need to be hearing about no dead cameraman, all right? Now, I'm warning you guys. I am a verb away from vacating these premises. I'm going to go give me some coffee, donuts, Prozac, see if I can find some crack, Special K, X, not Malcolm. And I'll be back when you guys start talking about something a little more say by the bellish, all right? Ooh, let's see. For starters, uh, they impounded my van. It's now an official crime scene, thanks to you. Here's your footage. Enjoy. See ya. Wouldn't want to be you. Joel, I need you. No. No, you need to have your head examined. Did you get that on film? Yes, I got that on film. So I'm so good. glad. So <laughs> glad you left that last clip in there. Like, yes, I got that on film. He is it's, the best. It is amazing. I had to make that the last one, but he, I, it was funny because I was um when we were doing the watch along, I was like, I was like, Kevin, who's who who is who is Gail's best cameraman? And he was like, There's only one answer. Yes, I got that on film. <laughs> Joel, Joel the camera. So the good. He deserves his own movie. That was my review, by the way. What he he talked yeah. about, I rated it and I said, "Give Joel the cameraman his own movie, you cowards!" Because honestly, it's a great character. Yes, so <sighs> deservingly so. Um, yes. You want to talk about bringing comic relief to a movie? He did it um, mm -hmm. in every way possible. So, shout out to you, Joel, for being the MVP. Yes. That I feel like is he is not talked about a lot. Let's, let's he is go. not. Good job. Good job. Yes. Good job, Joel. Good job. Yes, yes definitely um, one of the biggest highlights of the movie. Honestly. Yeah. So big, big standout uh, for him. Um, I like Sydney a lot in this movie. I'll be honest with you. This is my favorite Sydney Prescott. Mm -hmm. um, I think she is super badass and you can make the same argument. I feel like let's be honest in every movie, but 
in two and three, like I felt like she was just like she was just fucking fed up at this point, and she was just taking whatever, especially in three. But two, she she I don't know, she just takes it to another level. Uh, she's she's taking when the movie comes out in the very beginning when we see her, she's playing along with it, and um, even at the end, um, she plays no games when she's going back and forth with uh, Billy's mom. Um, yeah. so I just think Sydney is badass in this movie. I think she is super hot in this movie. She rocks the hell out of that short hair. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I just I just feel like this is my favorite Sydney Prescott um out of the entire trilogy or not trilogy and the uh franchise. So um yeah. yeah, she was super badass. Um, and then I guess going back to what you said, just um Dewey and Gail's chemistry in this movie was really, really good. Um and we see it kind of kind of really pick up where it left off. Obviously, when when they get together and, and two in the very beginning, they're kind of going back and forth with each other. But all it takes is that one Gale Weather smile and Dewey is sucked right back into her. Um, mm-hmm. So I would say those are probably my three biggest highlights um, of the movie. Um, really, really good stuff. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, you bring up a really great point about Sydney. I feel like the reason why she's so... Sorry, so no, love <laughs> as a final girl is because she has like a um, believable character progression, right? So like after the second movie, she's or the first movie, she's trying her best to move on in the only way that she can, but she's not trusting and she's fed up. In the third movie, we see that uh, like in tenfold, you know. So and she has like what what's that line at the end of Scream Two where she's like, "Oh, you're forgetting about." one thing about billy loomis i killed him or something like that it's like it, i fucking killed him so good it's so good and uh, yeah you're right she is like she's very loved as a final girl for a reason and she's badass she's a hot badass for sure yeah she's she's phenomenal in this movie um and rightfully so again i talked about it on on the scream review i think that that first movie is probably the best casted movie out of all of the movies yeah. uh, for obvious reasons but i thought they did a really good job in two nobody really annoys me into except for billy's mom like mm-hmm. she just annoys me as a character like i don't know not a, not a big fan but um jump into our dislikes i'll kind of start off with dislikes because i want to start with mickey i haven't always been the biggest mickey fan as a ki- as a killer um and the more i watch scream 2 i think i kind of come to the conclusion as to why i don't like him as a killer i feel like we don't see enough of him on screen um when you know compared to really all the all of the other movies if if we're being honest i mean three roman's not on screen too much but i feel like he's a lot more on screen than what mickey is i just feel like there comes a point in a movie um i think it's right after the cafeteria scene um mm-hmm. that's the last time we see mickey for like 45 minutes to 50 minutes we just get nothing from him um so when the reveal happens you're kind of shocked but it's like you didn't really have enough time to kind of grow with this character like we did with billy and Stu in the first one so um i think that was always the biggest reason as to why i didn't like mickey um it's just not having enough screen time for him yeah you bring up a really good point and i didn't really think about it like that because i i like his character and i really like the ending um, when he kind of like gets a little bit of that Stu Mocker psycho. Yeah. Um, but you're totally right. That's what it was missing. He was missing screen time. He was missing character development. And I get like, they tried to really harp on that. What do they call him? Like a Tarantino film student, <laughs> like just like yeah. crazy. Um, and that makes sense, but they definitely could have built more upon that. So that's a really good point. Yeah, so um, that was that would be kind of, I guess, a dislike is his lack of screen time. Um, and then I'll be honest, I'm not the whole, I'm not the biggest fan of the whole Billy's mom uh, kind of took that they went with it. It kind of makes sense if we're being honest. What mom wouldn't, you know, feel some type of way about a situation like that? But I don't know. It just it just didn't sit right with me. The whole Mickey thing was more believable to me than billy's mom but um i just didn't like her as a character um she was very annoying to me um but really those are the really only two things um going back to something that i do like i don't know if i'm in the minority about this but last thing on what i do like about this movie uh and really three two i kind of like cotton as as a character i don't know if you do or not but i don't know i've 
I don't know, something about him I just, I don't know, I, I enjoy. He's like, I don't know, he comes off as like he wants to be a hard ass and super serious, like when he has the gun and talking about the Diane Sor Sawyer interview. And then as soon as he pulls the trigger, he turns it back into a little soft boy. It was like, you know, I wasn't going to hurt you, Sid. I would never do that. And then like, give me, the, she's like, give me the gun, Cotton. He's like, oh, yeah, 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 sure. Here you go. <laughs> Like it's I don't I've all I don't know he just comes off as clumsy and very likable to me which is I don't know if that's weird to say but I don't care. I don't think I'm it's weird it. no I don't think it's weird to say I flop back and forth on Cotton as a character it's yeah. probably like the most internally discussed like thing in my brain is like Cotton <laughs> and how I feel about him because I, I agree with you like he at the ending the end where he's like oh here have the gun like <laughs> he's just trying to help her but. Also, like, he really wants to serve his own agenda and, like, get recognized for – and I have to relate to him that – not like I've been in that position before, but, like, Sydney's false testimony sent him to jail. Like, I mean, he's that's been true. in jail. Yeah. And so I, I kind of understand where he's coming from, but – I think it would have been really great if they would have developed his character a little bit more I with agree. like that rapport with Sydney because yeah. like Sydney having, I don't know, lost so many people, it would have been cool to turn his character into somebody that she could have relied on or like had a closer relationship with. You bring up a good point with that as well. Like it, they definitely should have took advantage of that. I mean, they had a prime opportunity to in that second movie, and really in the third movie, you didn't have to kill him off in the opening scene yeah. as well. You could have definitely have built his built his character up, and you know he's a, he's a well known character. Um, so no, I I agree with that. Um, and, and again, they kind of go back and forth with flirting. Is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? Like we see how he acts towards her in the library, and then. It's kind of nice to her mm -hmm. and it's like okay it makes you play with your emotions like is he a nice guy is he not a nice guy like what are we doing here yeah it's tough it's really tough because i feel like they had that opportunity with a lot of characters but they just didn't follow through and if they would have maybe like i don't know i feel like sydney's best friend i don't even remember her name in scream 2 which is pretty awful um i don't either <laughs> but I, I know she has to have that like best friend role almost, but I feel like if they would have taken away some of her rapport with Sydney and put it into some other characters or like given it to Mickey and make his character a little bit closer to Sydney, you know, they could have balanced that out a little bit better. Yeah, I think I think that that's a, definitely a great way to handle that situation, because I'll be honest, when she died, I didn't really feel anything. I was just yeah. like, yeah, OK. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they again they had a key opportunity with Cotton there to to at least we know him from the first movie as far as like words and stuff like that and like who he is and um, we had that rapport there so I agree I think that that definitely would have been a uh, really really good decision but I would say that those two um, are probably my biggest uh, dislikes from this movie is the lack of screen time from Mickey and not the biggest fan of Billy's mom so what about yeah you? um. I don't know. I, I agree with you, but I will say I am not a fan of Randy's death in this movie. I think, and I know it's like a huge point of contention and everyone basically agrees and Wes Craven even agreed, but his death was just unsatisfying for such an important character, a legacy character. Um, and it was funny, I was talking with Kevin before this too about like the speech that like Randy gives on the phone, like when he thinks he's talking to whomever. But basically he like makes you feel like you can run through a wall. You're like, yes. all right, Randy, hell yeah. And then he just gets like, I don't know, that was just extremely unsatisfying. And I feel like he deserved a better. I would have to agree with you on that. I really yeah. would. Uh, I'm a big Randy person. So side story. Jamie Kennedy is coming to a comedy club near me next weekend, and I really wanted to go. And now the tickets are sold out. I wait. No, long. I know. Oh, no. I'm an idiot. Like I'm so like, I really wanted to go so bad, and they were so cheap. They're like twenty five bucks, and I just waited too long. Um, yeah. And now they're sold out. Um. But I've always loved Jamie Kennedy. Um. I've seen him at conventions. He's super funny. He jokes around a lot, and then. Like his character on screen, I feel like is him in a sense in real life. Like he's just super funny. He he definitely brings that com comic relief to it. And then 
I agree with you. The speech on the phone was absolutely phenomenal. Like, mm -hmm. so good. And then, like, it's like, what does he die for? Right. Nothing. Nothing. Exactly. Like, if, if you kill him, okay, like, whatever. Like, I, I'll, I'll probably still feel some type of way about it, but at least let him die for a reason. Like, is he saving Sydney? Is he doing this? Is he, or is he doing that? I'm like, oh. You're so right. Like he should have been saving Sydney because this whole thing was like the unrequited love character, but he never really like got to see that through or like we don't even get to see Sydney's reaction to Randy's death I, really. I know. Which is so weird. And like I in the third movie with the tape, it, that's great and that's a good way to honor him. But I just felt like his death was just like so shitty, honestly. It was. It, it really was. And uh, I brought this up last podcast. Um, do you remember in the first movie where Sydney first gets the call from Ghostface and she thinks it's Randy? Yeah. She's like, I like what you're doing with your voice, Randy. It's kind of sexy. Sexy, yeah. I've, I've always <laughs> said, my man Randy had to die without knowing Sydney said that. Poor guy. Oh, <laughs> that makes me sad, if actually. He if he would have known, at least that small token, like he would have died a happy man, at least. At least he would have died with a happiness. smile on his face. Like, exactly. All right. Exactly. Or, or like we would have gotten like him trying to lower his voice just like naturally <laughs> as in like a funny way. Exactly. It, like he was just so great. I mean, RIP. RIP. And one of the first things that he does when he walks out of the classroom is he said he would let the geek get the girl. Yeah. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. So sad anything else outside of randy's death i mean that's a real good one i mean that's um, super solid yeah yeah other than that no the older i get the more i love this movie i think it's like i used to not love the theater aspect of it um yeah. but like i don't know i see how it ties into the whole like chaotic vibe and Sydney trying to like explore all these different avenues. I don't know, but I love it. I think it's really, really fun. I love the scene where um she's like doing rehearsal and like oh, ghost yes. face like pops yeah. in and out. I I think that's super cool. Yeah, that that was a really good scene. So um moving off from that, let's talk about our top three favorite moments from the movie. It can be just one simple moment, one scene, whatever you want to talk about. We'll kind of go uh, three, three, two, two, one, one. So if you want to start off with um, one, and you don't have to, it doesn't have to be in order. If you want it to be in order, you can. Um, but what is what is the scene that you really enjoy? Um, I really like um, Casey Cece's death scene. Sarah, uh, what's her name? Sarah Michelle Geller. Geller. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, I. I love her as an actress. I love Buffy. Um, huge Buffy fan. Huge yeah. um, Helen Shivers fan from I Know What You Did Last Summer. She did not. I'll, <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. But um, I think it was really interesting. And they put a lot of depth into that specific kill scene. Um, I almost felt like it was really similar to Drew Barrymore's opening scene. It but, was, yeah. Yeah, I I really enjoyed it. I The only thing I wish is that I wish he wouldn't have just thrown her off of the balcony <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but um i i think that brought a really good anticipation um and like it broke up a lot of that heavy heavy plot and i like that yeah i think uh that's a real good one um one one for me would be um i this is um trying to think I, I, i'll go opening scene it's a cop out but uh opening scene i, I think um i've always really enjoyed um I, it's just something about being in that theater and like she is getting stabbed in front of hundreds of people and nobody's really noticing you have i think i i noticed something every time i watch the movie but i noticed like last night that somebody looked like they got blood on their hands and they were looking at their hand i never noticed that before as many times as i saw the movie so um, that opening scene in general, I thought was done so well um, in a scary standpoint, a comedic standpoint. Um, and again, they hit on another really good opening scene. So that would be probably number three for me uh, on, on on one of my favorite moments from the movie. Yeah, that yeah, honestly, 
It's so great. I mean, Scary Movie recreated it, right? Um, <laughs> it's so good. I love Scary Movie. It's Me too. Awesome. Me too. It's awful. But um, yeah, I think it's not a cop out because it's so great. So I'll let you get away with that one. Appreciate it. What else? What else you got? Um, Other than like all of the Joel, the cameraman scenes. Uh, you can go oh, with I, that. that. Okay, that I'll go with I'll go with that, but I'll give you another one. I really okay. like the um the end scene where uh Gail is like, oh, by the way, can we talk about the fact that Gail got shot and at, like the very end of the movie, she's up like running up the stairs yeah, to get up to Dewey. She's a trooper, but um she is. I love how like Joel runs up to her and was like, let's get the scoop. And she sees Dewey coming down in a stretcher and like chooses to go with him in the ambulance rather than like do her story. I thought that was like yeah. a really nice thing to add at the end to like reinforce their relationship, their love. That wasn't, you didn't need to include that, but it said a lot about the characters and their relationship. Oh, absolutely. Um, it just, it, it puts another, I don't know. It shines another light on it. Um, so that's, that's definitely a really good choice. Um, I would, I would go with, I really enjoyed um Ghostface and Gail's slow chase mm. in that in that like auditorium movie room type setup where she's like where she's creeping through and she like leans up against like the padded wall and he comes through and leans up against the padded wall too I just thought that that was done so well um it was like a chase scene but it was like super quiet and super slow I thought that they pulled that off really well and I was, and my favorite moment from this movie and my favorite scene I feel like is going to be where Sydney crawls through the window after the car crashes. I yeah. think there is so much tension in that scene to where the door, they find out the door is locked. The wind, they can't get out that back window. Um, they have to crawl through the front and she wants to rip the mask off. And like, can you imagine having to crawl over your killer to get out the window? Like that has got to be, yeah, like super scary in itself to be in that situation. But I just thought they created so much tension with that scene and the music background music was done really well. And then when she runs back to see to see if he's there to see who it really is, he's gone. I just thought that whole entire scene was done really well. And I think that is my favorite out of the entire movie. Yeah, no, that's such a good one. And because you're expecting like something to happen to yes. Sydney and then Sydney's friend you're expecting like okay it didn't happen to Sydney maybe it'll happen to a friend and it exactly. doesn't exactly until yeah. like maybe like a few minutes later but it's so interesting because you like think to yourself okay run away listen to your mm -hmm. friend just go away but also like half of you would do the same thing like I want to know who it is like I want to take exactly. the mask off so it's like it's not like it's a completely stupid decision that she's making you know it's like we would all deal with the same thing yeah because he's i mean he's knocked out in the front seat so why not just pull the mask off real quick see who it is and put it into the shit you know like exactly. so i agree she she definitely i don't think that that was anything crazy a lot of people probably would have done that as well me i don't know i probably would have ran but that's that, <laughs> yeah. that's a different story that's what we all would like to say right we would all run but um yeah who knows um, so let's talk about some kills. Uh, what were some of your favorite kills in the movie? Um, so I did opening scene. That was one of my favorite ones. And um, the knife to the head through the door, even though it's like <laughs> impossible. I think some of the best deaths are just like just totally stupid and out You're there. You're right. But yeah. It's so fun. Like, and it started the movie off on such a good kick. Like, we knew what we were getting after we saw those two deaths in the opening <laughs> scene. Like, we're getting campiness and fun. And I was so here for it. Me too. Me too. That's that's such a good choice. Um, I would probably go with CC Cooper's death. Yeah. Um, now I wish, like you, I kind of wish it was a little bit more gory because he did just kind of throw her off the top. Um, but I just like that whole entire sequence in general. And um, it was it was so good from the phone call to where he sneaks into the house and the chase up the steps. And I love I, again, I wish the kill was actually a little different, but I, I do like it when he stabs her and throws her off. And then like that music hits. It's like it's just so it's just so good. So that's one that always sticks out to me. Um, and then 
going back to the uh cop scene yes um because i was not expecting that um it was the most it was the goriest kill in the movie um mm-hmm. uh, when the pole goes right through his head and like you see like you see the image of the pole right through his head and then his hand is quivering and shaking mm-hmm. it's like oh i was not expecting that based off of the kills that i've seen in really all all of the all of the movies or the previous movie um and then the kills leading up to that one like that was very gruesome it doesn't involve well it does involve ghostface so yeah yeah i would i would go with that yeah that's Those that was mine too yeah. those the cop death and the whole poll and just like yeah is a, a series of unfortunate events for those guys <laughs> yeah poor guys um they were just trying to be protective and then uh yeah they got fucked they got fucked. i know it really um, it wasn't fair and i'd probably go opening scene if you know picking three i would go opening scene too it's just i've always loved that so that yeah, that's what but i that's will say go. yeah i know i know it's not a death but whenever they're like uh gail and dewey are in the two like sound rooms yeah and she's banging on that soundproof glass while like <laughs> dewey's getting stabbed yeah. i love that scene and because you're so right the whole like that was another one of my favorite moments too the the maze of like mm-hmm. gail and Ghostface and like dewey's trying to bang on the glass and you can't hear him and i just like even though he didn't die i think that's yeah. a very good like violent sequence <laughs> oh absolutely and then Typical Dewey fashion, he's trying to get cheese pizza stuck off his foot. Um, <laughs> this man, Dewey, I know he's just the goofiest guy in the world. Like, even the same movie when he like trips and falls down the steps in the auditorium, <laughs> like, such such a Dewey move. Like, I'm like, oh. is that Dewey or is that Ghostface? Like, which one trips more and is more clumsy? We should like make that a compilation, like, yeah, <laughs> Dewey absolutely. falling next to like Ghostface <laughs> falling. <laughs> That that would be that would be hilarious. Um, all right, so we talked about the movie. I kind of want to jump into the franchise rankings and kind of seeing where you place each movie. So just like everything else, we'll go. There's five installments right now, so we'll go five, five, four, four, all the way to one. So I'll let you start off with your fifth ranked movie in the Scream franchise. Okay, my fifth ranked movie uh, is Scream Five. <laughs> what? Yes, my fifth ranked movie, Scream Five. It it went back and forth. I've been doing a lot of rewatching. It yeah. was, I'll I'll get there. But um, honestly, the the first three and like I've grown to love the fourth so so much. But they have this like this element of nostalgia and like true like '90s slasher on like their movies about like Sydney, but they're very ghost face yeah. like yeah. centric and that's what i i loved so much about them is that like we get so much fun um and the fifth just like really you know we've talked about it just like didn't hit all those marks for me that i'm hoping the sixth one will hit so we'll see but as of right now my fifth rank is scream five yeah no shock um because that's my fifth rank too um Oof. so i was just super disappointed walking out of the movie um again i had heard all these like really great reviews leading up to the movie and and horror movies just don't really get good reviews and it was doing so well with so many like people that i really highly respected and respected their opinion and i was like man this might be like it might be like that and i walked out and i was like it was not like that yeah. um, so i was i was just highly disappointed and then uh the whole way that Dewey went out, I thought was uh, pretty terrible, um, and that's being nice about it. I like the actual yeah. like kill, like the two knives to the like. I that's a yeah. gory kill, but like again, I go to your point. You go back to Randy. What did Dewey die for? Yeah, in that situation, he died by being kind of an idiot by going back into the hospital and looking dead. You know what I mean? It's just like yeah, he's dying for nothing, and then um, kind of like the whole randy thing they don't really react to it not in the way that they should i mean it's fucking dewey that just died and it's yeah just like it, they cry for four minutes and then move on like i yeah. just don't get that i would really love to have seen like i mean first of all randy should have died for sydney dewey should have died 
to protect Gail. Yes. Even, even though like they weren't together during that movie, they still like had so many Easter eggs that called back to the the fact that like Dewey was still in love with her. Mm -hmm. And I think she probably was still in love with him. But we should have seen more. Like I would have loved I would have loved to have like a like Gail that needed to be sedated because she Absolutely. was so upset. Like I feel like if that were me, I would just be totally inconsolable like where is that connection that we had in the other movies exactly. she's like oh okay and then just like went along with her life and maybe we'll see that more in scream six like her grieving process but i feel like it was such bullshit do we deserve the best because he was the best he was the most like kind and loving i'm talking about him like i this man actually exists in real <laughs> life but you're totally right it. all of it was just like i could go on for days i hate i hated that scene I don't know how much Gail is grieving because in the trailer, it looks like there's another man there with her. Now that yeah. could be that could be any anybody, but like, I don't know. It looks like she's in her apartment, and I actually I'm trying to stay away from TV spots because TV spots are now all over YouTube. Yeah. But I came across one, and it's a guy picking up a phone in her apartment saying, "Gail, it's for you." So I don't know who that guy is, but I'm telling you, she is already shacked up. I'm gonna be angry. I'm going to be so very angry. angry. <laughs> that does not do justice for Dewey. I want to ask you something, and and I just want your honest opinion about it, because me and Kevin talked about this a lot, actually. Do you ever feel like uh, we're talking about Scream 2, and I feel like there's a moment in Scream 2 and in Scream 4, and really in Scream 3, where I feel like they flirt with the idea of Dewey and Sydney having some type of love interest interest together like i feel like in two in the gazebo yep. i feel i feel it there a lot and then like in four i really feel it when they're on the couch and like they're just staring into each other's eyes and dewey gets up he's like yep i gotta go like it, i feel like they do flirt with that in several movies for me i feel like it would be kind of weird because dewey has always come off as a big brother but yeah. i definitely feel like they they toy with that idea do you see that as well yes okay. yeah definitely but i don't know if that's um dewey's character's reaction to like uncomfortable situations because he is True. kind of like a different type of guy um but when they're standing in the gazebo and I, they're talking about Sydney's new boyfriend and Dewey's yeah. like, well, well, what is this? And <laughs> I don't know. I, I see what you mean. And I do think it'd be a little weird just because like ever since the first movie, he's been like the big brother character. But yeah, I you could see how much they loved each other. And I don't know whether that translated on a romantic level in like some aspect, whether they were toying with it or not, or maybe like they wanted to set up that opportunity in the future of True. Dewey and Sydney, whatever. But yeah, I could see that for sure. That's a good, that's a good thought. But now we'll never know because they fucking killed Dewey off. And not only did Gail mm. react, not re really react. Sydney didn't react either. They didn't give her a chance to react. And Sydney, like he's, like you said, he's been protecting her since day one. So it's just like, oh man. And then not to jump, to, well we are on five i hated amber by the way when she oh, had the, yeah. when she had the nerve to say and he died like a pussy i wanted to jump through the tv screen i don't and just like i don't know what i wanted to do but it really pissed me off yeah i know that that was supposed to like make us hate her and like want to see her death but like that's was, dewey that's yeah. dewey we're talking about so Show like let's respect. acknowledge exactly respect your elders ma'am um it was, a, I don't know, I just feel like the whole thing of bringing in a brand new cast of characters is really tough whenever they disrespect older characters. And maybe, like, yeah. we sound like such boomers right now, but, <laughs> like, come on, what are you doing? Like, show some love and respect for the legacy characters, and I don't know. Yeah, did yeah. not like it. Agreed. Uh, what's number four for you? Number four for me is Scream 3. Ooh. Um, Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, only because of Gail's bangs. Those are. <laughs> I'm just kidding. They're fine. She rocks them. Um... <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I will say something I really loved about Scream 3 is, again, Sydney's character progression. I feel like the whole recluse kind of like shut in thing that she has going on, like makes a lot of sense for what has like happened to her in the past. Yeah, I agree. Um, what is it that you kind of dislike about 3? Or do you dislike it? I don't hate it. Um, it's not one that like I rewatch and rewatch all the time voluntarily. Um, I don't really love the whole, like, I love the stab element, but I don't love the idea of a whole movie revolving around stab, if that makes you. sense. Yeah. It, it just like took it a little bit too far for me, in my opinion. No, I agree. I definitely think they had something good with the whole stab movie in two. Obviously, yeah. they didn't dive as deep in it as they did in Scream 4. I mean, uh, Scream 3. So I definitely get where you're coming from. Um, number number four for me is going to be Scream 4. Mm. Um, fitting. Still, st- yeah. <laughs> the list is going to be fitting. Um, <laughs> just tipping my hand. Um, I don't know. It's just... I will, I will say one positive thing about the movie is I didn't... I would say it's pro- for me, it was one of the most surprising killer reveals, mm-hmm. as in Jill. Um, that's just one that I really wasn't seeing. Um, and they played it off really, really well. Like throughout the movie, Ghostface looks really, really tall. And then at the end, when they make that reveal for Jill, when she comes around the corner and stabs Sydney, I mean, they didn't do a great job of the camera work. I could tell it was a very short person in that yeah. Ghostface costume. So I kind of knew it was going to be a girl or a really a really short guy, but it obviously ended up being Jill. But I was super shocked by that because that was one person I wasn't expecting. I did expect one of the movie people to be like the one runners of the movie club to be one of the killers. I can't remember who I originally thought it was, but I think they hit with that. Wasn't the biggest fan of him, but yeah. um, again, wasn't the biggest fan of the cast either. Although I did like Kirby as a character in this movie. Um, I do think that um, we get one of the most goriest scenes in, in the franchise with the bedroom kill scene. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously we don't get to see a lot, a lot, um, but we see her getting stabbed in the hand. And obviously when Sydney walks into the room, her guts are laying out of her stomach and there's blood all over the place. So there are some good elements in it that I, that I enjoyed. I will say, we'll say this. There's not a movie in the franchise that I absolutely hate except for five. Yeah. I, I, I still like, I, I think it's right there on that hate level for me. It's I tried to rewatch it and I just can't, I just can't do it for many reasons, but um, yeah. Number four for me is screen four. Yeah, I number three for me is Scream Four. I really like this one. Um, I I think Jill is an extremely underrated Ghostface killer. She uh, just like the whole performance. She is deranged whenever she's like beating herself up. Like, oh yeah, insane. She Fucking does such crazy. a great job. It, crazy, and the fact that they pulled off that reveal, like the way that they did at the end, it. It's just iconic and I love it. I love it. I love the whole misdirect. Like that's Mm -hmm. one of the best misdirects in my opinion of like any horror movie of the past 10 years. Like everything about it or when does it come out? 2011? I don't know. Yeah, it was 11 or 12. 20 years. Okay, we're in 2023. That's ridiculous. But it's just, I I think it's fantastic. Um, I agree with you. Some of the cast is very hit or miss, but we get Kirby, we get Jill, and I'm happy with that. <laughs> yeah, and it was really one of the first movies like we really well no in three two, but I don't know. I, I will say that um, that was probably the most surprising part for me. Going back to that again is just Jill and that reveal. Um, mm. It was just done so well. Um, and then I'm glad Kirby didn't get die. I've, I really liked her character. I've always been a big fan of Hayden. So excited to see what she brings in, into Scream 6. And they hope I hope they utilize her character really well. Uh, but no, I, I agree with you. Um, it, it, even though it's not loved by me, it's not on that hate level either. There's only one movie that's on that level. So um, okay. I actually rewatched four the other night. Um, so uh, number three for me, since you gave your number three, Scream 3, fitting. 
Um, yeah, this is a movie that I feel like a lot of people just don't like. Um, it, I see it ranked last in a lot of the uh, rankings, mm-hmm. um, whether it's on Letterbox or just YouTube. It's it's always one of the last ones, and I just don't understand why because I feel like they do a really good job with uh the storytelling in this movie again i don't really like the whole stab thing and how deeply they dived into that um i love the battle scene between um sydney and god what the fuck is his name i'm so bad with names um her, roman? Her, yeah roman roman there you go um i love their battle scene in the in the basement or in that movie room whatever the hell it is i thought it was done yeah. so well sydney's such a badass when she revealed that she had a bulletproof vest on as well yeah. i don't know that was that was one of the best fight scenes in a screen movie um that i that i that, that comes to my mind so that was done really well i love the opening scene um i just think ghostface was really good in this movie uh so yeah i would go scream 3 for number 3 yeah, no, that's a good point. The whole like Sydney just evolves into like more and more of a badass. It's awesome. The yeah. bulletproof vest, <laughs> that iconic, honestly. But I, I will say I'm not a fan of like the half brother. Yeah, that was a little too far. That was a little too far. And that yeah. I will say when she first gets to the house and he makes her dump her gun. Yeah. And then she pulls out the second gun and she's like, think again, asshole. I'm like, okay, Sydney Prescott, let's fucking go. <laughs> of course, she's going to have two guns. Exactly. She's not going to show up with one. She's not stupid. Exactly. So I love her. Um, And then I guess she she ends up marrying Patrick Dempsey. So whatever. Yeah. Um, good for her. Uh, Honestly. What, <laughs> what's number two for you? Scream 2. So we probably have. Similar, uh, similar yeah. rankings. <laughs> two and one, I think. Scream one, number one for for us, and then Scream two. We've already talked about Scream two, so let's kind of talk about uh, the first Scream. Um, what was your? I, I kind of want to know, not diving too deep into it, but what was your favorite aspect of that first movie? Like, what's something that really? I know it's hard. It's hard. It's hard. To, it's hard to pull out just one because I feel like they hit on literally everything in this movie. Yeah, um, I think like pretty solidly it's uh, Billy and Stu. Like, Absolutely. 100%. 100%. One of, one of my favorite scenes is um, the ending when they're in the kitchen. In the kitchen, And they say that, and Billy says that there was no motive. And then he goes into his motive about, you know, the situation with Sydney's mom and his dad. And that's why his mom abandoned him. And, like, it was such a drop. And kind of like a real life situation like and it was yeah. so shocking to even Stu is in the background behind him like with such a serious stunned face because it's like he's finding that out for the first time and it's like oh shit um but it's just like they really dive into that. i think that first movie is a lot deeper than people give it credit for because yeah. i'm not saying that abandonment can turn you know is something that you know that person turns into a killer but when it comes to abandonment so many things are affected in that person's life and um it kind of makes sense and to see how how uh billy ended up or thought you know what was going through billy's mind and and feeling abandoned and just you know situations like that um i think is uh that movie's a lot deeper than people give it credit for definitely 100 percent. and i think ski orich like delivers that performance perfectly so good. he he did such a great job and like maybe that says a lot for him but uh he plays that psycho deranged character so 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 well also of course matthew lillard like yeah. his <laughs> oh that whole like s- scene of dialogue where he's like my parents are gonna be so mad at me like <laughs> I love you hit it. Me with the phone, you dick. God, oh my god, that really hurts, man. I think I'm yeah. dying here. It's so good, so good. And I don't think oh, like man. any killer, any other characters have just come close to what they've been able to. Not touch. at all. Yeah, not at all. It's like a. I don't know, uh, but I will say this. I don't know why this made me think of it, but um, Tatum, I think, is a very, very, very good friend. Uh, I think like her character gets overlooked a lot just because we have it so does. many big yeah. big hitters in Scream One, but Tatum is such a good friend to Sydney, um, and like we see that with like all of her other like best friend stand-ins, right? Like they're not on the level that Tatum is on, not at all. But yeah. um, 
I think it's so funny how like they're like I think on the porch talking or whatever and Tatum's like well like look on the bright side they could make a movie about your life and she's like yeah, well with my luck they'd cast Tori Spelling <laughs> and then in Stab they cast Tori, Tori Spelling, Spelling. <laughs> as Sydney so and that whole like connection yeah. is just really funny to me yeah I thought that was really cool yeah I mean that that first scream is just so iconic um I mean we can sit here and, and talk about it for hours because there's so much to dive into um it's just one of my favorite horror movies of all time one of my favorite movies of all time i mean just yeah. forget forget the genre um it's just done so well it's casted so well um the acting in it's phenomenal there's not one character in that movie that that annoys me i think everybody kind of fits so mm -hmm. um it's it's only right that 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 movie's uh number one for sure always of course how, no doubt about it how'd you feel about that bringing billy back in in five i hated it me too me too like just i know they added some cgi they said they added a little cgi to his face i feel mm -hmm. like you could kind of tell too and then again i don't know if it's just because i'm so used to seeing skeet with uh, a beard now and mm -hmm. i don't know his face is obviously has aged it just looked weird it looked really weird to me like honestly i just thought they all i thought they just cgi his face at first until he posted on instagram like he, he was actually in the movie, like as him, like in the costume and or in his outfit and everything. I thought they just CGI'd him in. I just I didn't think it looked too well. Yeah, I me like either. Me. Yeah, I just thought like there's so many other ways you could have done that. I mean, I'm not a fan of like her being Billy's daughter. I think that was dumb. But yeah, like you could have gone about that in so many different ways of like that didn't involve him kind of popping up as like a figment of like her imagination whatever i don't know was not a fan of that at all <laughs> me neither me neither um but that that's gonna wrap up our screen two review before we kind of get off the podcast anything else that you want to say about scream six like what do you what do you want to happen most i guess i'll ask you that uh because we won't talk again until the round table so just a few weeks away, literally like a month away, I think. Um, I think what's today the eighth. So, yeah. really, yeah, really, really, just really a month away. Um, what do you what do you want to happen in six for you to walk out of the theater happy? I don't want to say satisfied, but happy, like to where you enjoy it. I want to be able to connect with the main character more, Melissa Barrera. She's I'm sure she's great in everything else that she's in. And she was she was good in Scream, but I couldn't connect to her character whatsoever. Um, so I feel like especially with not having Nev return, we need something else to really make us care about these characters. And I guess like Kirby, yes, that's great. Gail, sure. But I don't know. I think at the end of the day, I just want a brutal ghost face. Like I – and even I know – um you guys were talking about it uh, on the last episode, but like one of them, maybe there's a couple and maybe one gets away or like something just really unexpected different. happens. Yeah. Different. Just give me something different for yeah. God's sake. But um, I want it to be brutal and bloody and intense and I don't want it to be so meta and comedic. I want it to take itself seriously this time. <laughs> no, I agree a hundred percent. I think you make a great point. Um, I definitely, think that they should i mean this is the first movie without nev campbell as sydney prescott so you got to make some type of impression and i just think it's going to be super hard for them to do for me personally because i didn't enjoy the last movie mm -hmm. because i didn't connect with the characters i think that i really would have connected with jenna ortega's character but she didn't have a big role in that last movie so will her role be bigger in this movie it kind of looks like it will which i think is a smart move Mm -hmm. um, but still, the the main character is still there, and I just did not connect with her. So I'm interested to see how they are going to do that and if they can drag me in to connect with that character. And, yeah, I agreed. I, I mean, I think for me personally, I said that I wanted them to do something different. Like, this is a perfect time for them to have the first screen movie where one of the killers gets away because i mean let's be honest they're most likely gonna make one more with this director and this cast so yeah. um do something different I, I would i would like to see that um and then to your last point as far as ghostface being more gorier uh less 
less meta. Uh, I totally agree with that. I got a lot of good vibes from the trailer. It feels a lot darker. It, it feels like he is different, um, which I feel like we did we couldn't say in a lot of the past movies. Um, it does feel different. It does feel darker. Uh, so I'm excited to see where they take Ghostface. So I'm with you. I agree with all the points that you made. That's what I would like to see. Um, and that's pro- what, what I will, I would walk out of the theater being super satisfied with that if they were able to pull that off. So, yeah, well, I'm glad we agree. I guess we'll see you in a month or so, right? Yeah, I guess we will. So Jess, appreciate you coming on, uh, and spending, spending some time with me again, uh, on this road to scream six. Uh, we will definitely see you back in about a month for the round table. And hopefully we have great things to say about it. Uh, because the last round table I had for Halloween ends, it was just shitting on the movie and rightfully so. so. <laughs> yeah, it um, deserved it. <laughs> yeah, ho- hopefully this one's a lot different. But uh, before we get off here, where can everybody follow you uh, on social media? Yeah, so uh, my YouTube channel is Discount Final Girl. Same with my Insta and my Twitter. If you want to follow me on Letterbox, it's Disco Final Girl because I ran out of characters. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks again for having me. I, I really enjoy this. I can't wait for the round table. Absolutely. Appreciate you coming on and appreciate everybody tuning into the Take One podcast, episode 37. And uh, we'll see you on the next one.